Uh, my dad died when I was nine years old. Did that cause me any problems, potentially? My mum got involved with uh, another relationship with me, but became stepdad only a few months after my dad died. And I don't know, that did something, it broke something in me. Move on a few years to when I was about 19, I got into full-time employment. I'd spent so many of my teen years with older people, looked up to people like that and wanted to be like them. And very quickly I could adapt to any situation surrounding and be like them. And I got this job uh, at 19, steel erecting all around the country. And the lads that I was working with were doing the party drugs, the alcohol, the pills, all sorts like that. The same started happening again. It wasn't long before I was trying to be like them. Not long after that, the, the, the heroin knocked on the door and the crack. For lots and lots of years, I was a functioning addict. I did get married, had children. Got such a well-paid job at the time, the, the addiction started to get even worse and more out of control. And because I was working away from home all the time, and my wife and, and children, they weren't seeing the real me. They were only seeing me at a weekend when I could act quite normal. But yeah, I was out of control. The company that I was working for went out of business. So I was at home all the time. Everything came out about my addiction issues and everything. The marriage broke down at that point. And then for a good number of years, I, I spent lots of times uh, sofa surfing, homeless, causing even bigger rifts in the family. I got into a toxic drug fraud relationship. I got in trouble with the police again that year for possession with intent to supply. They put me into uh, Knott's Crown Court for trial. Uh, January 2016, I got this sentence. Uh, the difference was that I got a probation officer that really related to me and could understand what I was going through. I had to uh, visit Knott's Crown Court once a month to see the same uh, judge that sentenced me and he only asked me for one clean drug test a month. That's all the requirement was. For the first five months, I didn't give him a clean drug test, not one. And the relationship was so toxic, my partner was turning violent. I was turning up at probation for, with black eyes where I was getting beat by her. It all come to a head at the beginning of June 2016. I was due to be in court for my drug review and uh, it was half past four in the morning. I saw a flash in the light, kitchen light, over my right shoulder. And it was a knife coming over, over my shoulder. And it pinned my arm to the breakfast bar. Like a murder scene, there were blood everywhere. I had to pull the knife out myself. Didn't go to hospital, didn't go to doctors or anything, just went to court. Over the next few days, I knew I was getting very, very poorly. From the top of my neck here, right down to the back of my fingernails, my arm had gone black. I went for a blood test, saw a nurse, but blacked out. That's the last thing I remember until about three weeks later. Uh, I can't even remember leaving the doctor's surgery, but apparently they put me in an ambulance and blue lighted me up to Kingsmill. The infection had gone to my brain, encephalitis, and it was just shutting my entire body down. They told my family that if he does survive, he'll probably never walk, talk, feed himself, be normal ever again. Three and a half weeks later, they brought me out of the coma and within half an hour, I was sat up eating and drinking and talking to the nursing staff. And they, was, they were shocked. Unbeknown to me, my probation officer, she visited me every day while I was in that intensive care, talking to me, wanting me to, to survive this, telling me that there was something different. It was the 26th of June, 2016, the, the nurse sister, Terry, came to me and. And she says, well, there's a phone call for you. Will you come and take it? And it was Darren Jones. He started telling me about the project he'd got in Shybrook, a lot like this, the zero tolerance to drugs and alcohol. He told me everything about it, a Christian charity. Would I be interested in having a place there to help me recover? And I quite clearly remember saying to him, I said, Darren, I'd love a chance. I'd love a chance to change, but it's getting that chance. And he gave me a chance there and then on the phone. And they just opened the door to me and welcomed me home. And as soon as I walked in that place, I just, I knew there was something different about it. And so as soon as I walked in, they wanted me there and they said, welcome home, son. And I've not heard that for years. 
Uh, my understanding of, of God at the time was, if it had been real, why had I just gone through 23 years of, of that? I attended the service. John preached about the lost and the broken and about how Jesus plucks them to safety. John asked me if I'd like to give my life to Jesus. I accepted that and I did. And I, it's the best thing I've ever done because it, it, that was the thing that released me from that 23 years of addiction, life, of crime and everything. And I, I've not, absolutely not looked back from that day. And I'm nearly eight years clean. Has it been a struggle? Early on it was, yeah, massive struggle. But I always surrounded myself with good people. Gradually recovered day by day. I started going through the, the process of family reconciliation. That's, that's all been restored now. Children, my ex-wife, were like best mates. My relationship with my mum, my family, it's been restored. Everything's just been restored out to how, to how it, it should have been. And I know that's all through God's grace. I know it is. Could I have done it without that? Absolutely not. And now I'm senior support worker here at Green Pastures Derby and giving back and being able to, to minister into other lads' life that I've come into contact with. To show them that this change that I've gone through, this restoration is possible for them. It's possible for anybody.